Okay, guys, this is pretty early in the morning. I don't think this is going to take too long. What I'm going to do today is make a folio, like box folio for um, my swap. I know the last time we did a live and we made a couple things and another one I think I did pre-recorded. Probably not going to do a live for another week or so. But, um, but I want to get this done because I think a lot of you guys are already getting your swaps in since yesterday, probably today, and probably Monday. So um, I have my swaps here. I'll have some links in the description box to some of the basic things that I'm using. Those would be affiliate links, which means I'm like a small commission if you're purchasing time sales links. But for now, I have some little notes. <laughs> hey, if I've thought about it this far ahead, you guys know this is going to be good. <laughs> and then I have my swaps. Now, lots of... Sweet people sent me extra ones or other folders, so I would like to make my particular box much thicker, but I'm going to make it so that it would hold four. Um, I'll talk about how you can make it to hold more, or maybe you want to make an extra pocket, you know, to hold your other items or other things you might want to put in there. I don't know. So for right now, I have my little guys, and we know these are five by seven, so we want something that's going to house four five by seven uh, Christmas folders, ephemera folders. And, um... Oh, everything, you guys, everyone who's contacted me saying that they've gotten their swap in is like, oh, I love this one, this is so much, I love all my folders, and, you know, thanks for the extra goodie, and of course those goodies came from Doris Davis, a subscriber who sent a huge package of things that were just, like, perfectly sized. Honestly, I think I let, uh, I was only left with three things, and one was, like, a magazine, because obviously it's really big, um, and then, like, a die set that was larger, and... Oh, what is it? Oh, a stencil, because it was like six by six. I couldn't get it in there, and I was like, that's it. Everything's gone. I was like, oh my, and that box was heavy, so really fun to have sent those out to everybody. But anyhow, I am going to base this off a tutorial I made, oh my gosh, probably 10 or 11 years ago, because I was still living in Monterey, and Dorian had turned two while we were there, so who knows when that actually happened, the video, but, you know, he's 12 years old now. Um... It's a good video. It's, you know, the way I used to film, and um, it's like you're looking at me this way. It's not the kind of thing where I do now where I flip it around uh, so that it looks like you're working, like these are your hands, <laughs> if, like if you're looking at it this way. Um, I really like that video, though, so I'll link it in the description box. I revamped it a couple of years ago, maybe last year, out of the vault, I called it, and I'm like, oh, you know, I should do more of that from the vault kind of thing. That one I really like. It's to hold uh, pictures, like four by six pictures, and it's an awesome folio. Um, had a lot of fun with it. It's going to be very long. It's like a long thing, and you saw it in the picture, but it's because we're going to fold it up. But um, you're going to need some long paper. I honestly do have some 24-inch paper because I have some Cricut paper from a long time ago when they first started making that big mat for the expressions. And um, But it's not... Well, I think I might have some Christmassy, but not everybody has that. So we're just going to piece paper together like I did in the other video. In the other video, I also used a 12 by 12 piece of paper that just made sense the way I cut it, and it was one piece, and you can cut it down to make a folio all in one. This one's not going to work out. Even if I had 12 by 12 piece, it's not going to work out because the numbers are kind of funky. So, last time I even had it already measured out on the paper, on the chipboard, which was really fun. And then I grabbed some paper that we're going to use, um, and we're also going to use some other sheets, but for now, that's the paper pad I'm going to use, I think. So I have two pieces of 8.5 by 11 um, chipboard and from each well I don't know for each one but we do need a seven and a quarter by five and three quarter piece now if you double that seven and a quarter okay cool you know you're gonna be left with one and a quarter inch at the top here but the five and three quarters doesn't lay, leave it so you can make another five and three quarters because five and three quarters times two is like eleven and a half so we're just a little bit off now if you don't care about how wide your folio is and you want to make it just as wide as um, the insert part then you could do five and a half, and you can get the two big sheets from this one piece. Or if you have a 12 by 12 piece, you can get that off of there. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Is it Diana? Somebody said, uh, whenever you say, to, um, does that make sense? They're like, no! <laughs> she doesn't, doesn't make sense to her. Um, anyway, so I'm going to do five and three quarters first on this one in this direction. And then um, I'll cut this up, and then we'll just talk about, you know, cut it up however you want. So one, two, three, four, five, and three quarters. And the reason I'm doing five and three quarters is I'm giving it a little bit of extra width. We're going to have inserts that hold everything. I wish I would have brought one of those other boxes out. I still have them. Um, so you can see what I'm talking about as we're doing this. But like I said, hopefully you saw the picture. So I'm going to hold this at five and three quarters. Let me go a little bit further up here. And then maybe we can still use some of this for some of the other cuts that we need and try to leave something more intact over here. But So you want to give it a really firm cut and then press down. And then my last closure, I used 
the um, cuddle bug and like a Biggs die. When those back in those days they were just called dies because they were just they weren't like special, uh, the big old thick dies. Uh, to make a class that this is going to lock into. But we'll talk about that when we get there. Okay. And then, so five and three quarters by seven and a quarter. So you're going to need two pieces that are five and three quarters by seven and a quarter. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a quarter. And it leaves you this piece. Now, what's funny about this is that I could make this gusset part where we're going to fold it over, the part that goes on the top and the bottom, you know, the thickness of it, one and a quarter inch. But I really want it to be about two inches. So you could do that and still save paper or save your chipboard. I mean, this is totally customizable. I'm giving you guys certain numbers. And, you know, you can definitely just use those numbers. You guys saw when I did the recycled chipboard. Uh, I'm sorry, recycled. Well, yeah, from the cake box. I mean, we did this in a way that looks like more like a traveler's notebook. If you want to keep yours the same from the last ephemera swap to this one, you know, do the same uh, kind of thing. I'm just showing different options that people can use. Or in your daily life with something else. So this is seven and one quarter by five and three quarters. And we're going to need two of those. Okay. So from this piece I have left here, how big is this? I didn't think this far because I was like, well, I'm not trying to save it. So you see it's five and a quarter, which is a total bummer. But we can get some of these other uh, measurements off of here. So um, let's see. I would need it to be this way. <laughs> so off this side, I'm going to cut in two inches. Again, you can do whatever you like if it makes sense to cut off the other one or however. But, oh, you know what I'm going to do? Before I even do that, I'll just cut it for uh, five and three quarters. So this is our extra piece. I'm going to cut it five and three quarters wide. One, two, three, four, five, and three quarters. And then I'll cut like the two inch or the three, whatever is I need extra here that we'll talk about in just a minute. Such a bummer, because if I, honestly, if you just don't care about that extra quarter inch, you could cut pretty much everything from this one piece. Um, you still need a little, a little bit extra. So I've cut this at five and three quarters wide, because we need three extra pieces that are five and three quarters inches wide, but one that's three inches, two inches, and two inches. These two should be the same, because they're going to, one's at the base and one's at the top, so they have to be exactly the same. It's like box making, you know, five and three quarter by two. How wide is this now? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll take a two and a three inch off of this one just to maximize that. So two inch. So one this is one of the five and three quarters by two. I'm trying to stay by my ruler, but I keep going crooked over here at the end for some reason. Come on, buddy. Okay, fine. It's a little bit wonky over here, but... Uh, so that's five and three quarters by two. I'll write it on here. And this one, I can t cut the, uh, I'll cut the wonkiness off because, like I said, I feel like that one kept going crooked there by three inches. And we're literally just cutting off the smallest. You know what? Okay, sorry. You know, I was going to say, um, this one needs to be cut at three inches. And you saw that it's literally a quarter inch and you cut off. And then I thought, well, I'll just, I can just leave it because this is just the front flap, this part. So if you can imagine, we have the front the bottom, the, I'm sorry, the back, the bottom, the front is going to be just as tall. And then, um, and then this piece comes over here and this is the flap that we're going to use. But I already did my measurements at taking into account <laughs> three inches. So I'm going to take that little quarter inch off. But if you don't want to make that extra cut, don't do it. It's not even important. You can just uh, leave it there. Um, but for now, I'll go ahead and cut it just so I stick to my, my numbers. Like I said, it's not even worth it. <laughs> it's not even worth possibly cutting yourself. No, hopefully, hopefully you don't. A nice sharp blade. Okay, so five and three quarters by three. And then we still have this piece that we cut off earlier. I'm trying to see what this is. This is, again, just like five and a quarter um, by something. But we don't need this because it doesn't work for us. It looks too short. So... On this one, I still need another um, five, uh, seven and a quarter, you know, five and three quarters by seven and a quarter. I'm trying to think if it makes more sense for me to cut it this way. Seven and a quarter. Nah, that'll waste some. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five and three quarters. 
five and three quarters. So what we're going to do is piece some 12 inch paper together and you can do it with eight and a half by 11 inch paper. It doesn't matter as long as the length of the paper when you're done is 22 inches and three quarters or so. I'm just going to tear that. Okay. So again, we have that five and three quarters by seven and a quarter. Two, four, six, seven and a quarter. I was going to go eight, but we don't want eight. We want seven and a quarter. Seven and a quarter. And that last time to paper piece my pieces together, I sewed them. It looked really cute. If you want to do that, I'm just going to glue these, but maybe we'll do something. I don't know. By five three quarters. Okay. And that means we need one more of the five and three quarter by two. We can keep this piece because we we might need this. Well, I know we're going to need it to help us build up thickness for our clasp. So we're just going to hold on to those scraps anyway. And here again, bummer that this is, you know, five and a quarter. Um, I'm going to trim this over two inches. Uh, there we go. This is a magnetic ruler. That's why the pen was trying to hold on to it. Over just a little bit. And honestly, if you're a little bit off, this project is very forgiving. So, um, in my opinion, I don't know. So two inches by five and three quarter. Two, four, five, and three quarters. Um, you'll be able to kind of fudge it a little bit. The only thing I always recommend is put these pieces down as straight as you can. This is basically like a mini album. This is something I made after years of making mini albums that just related to it. It just kind of went hand in hand. I'm like, oh, this is cool because it's like a, a mini album cover. So we'll talk about that in just a minute. Okay. Okay, two five and three quarter by two pieces. Two seven and a quarter by five and three quarter pieces. So it's something like this. This is going to be kind of hinged together with the parts that go on the inside. This is going to go on the top, and then this piece flaps down here. That's our closure. Okay, so two five and three quarter by two, one five and three quarter by three, and two seven and a quarter by five and three quarter, or five and three quarter by seven and a quarter, however you want to look at that. Okay, the insert pieces for this. Um, I'm just cutting pieces right now. Um, actually, you know what? We'll do that when we get there, I suppose. Yeah, so we're going to have these like accordion insert pieces, but we'll do that at the end because really we don't need them until then, which is just basically eight and a half by 11 paper cut like an A2 size card, and then we're going to score them, and that's it. So I just need two sheets. Really, I wanted to make this much bigger so I can accommodate some of the other folders I got, but that's okay. Um... So we need a piece of paper that is 22 and 3 quarter inches long by 6 and a half inches wide. So, again, the 6 and a half inches wide is going to make it that you're going to need two of the same, uh, well, two papers, because you can't just cut this in half at 6 inches and be good with that. You're going to need two of them. Um, but, we have to paper piece them anyway. So in my old videos, what I was doing was I was piecing together different types of paper just because it looks cute. Oh, wait, hold on. I wanted to use this poinsettia. Because why not? This is an old paper pack. I mean, I got this at Tuesday morning. I don't even know when. I don't know if you can tell dates by the sticker, but... Um, by the sticker, but... <laughs> by the sticker, but... And then I stopped talking. Uh, let's see here. I was thinking these two, just because they're festive and fun and almost clash. Oh, that's so cute. I wish I would have done that better. <laughs> the way I tore that one out. Oh, this one looks like gingerbread. So, ooh. Okay, we were hitting my light. We need both of these cut at six and a half inches wide, so I'm just going to take them both right now. And if you have a direction on your paper, you definitely want to pay attention to that, because once this comes around your project, it's going to be backwards and come back over. And I hope that makes sense. We'll talk about it right now in the next thing here. So six and a half. I'm just cutting them both at the same time. Where are we at? Six and a half right, right here. And that's just me being generous, giving myself quite a bit extra half an inch on either side which you don't need to and I guess if yeah no you still need you still need at least half an inch and I'm giving myself quite a bit um, from the five and three quarters I'm giving myself like a three quarters of an inch but either way uh, six and a half and now both of these except for this one has this extra bit let me just cut that off I'm gonna put them both together 
cut them right down at 12. So both of these are 12 inches long. And we need it to be 22 and 3 quarters, or you can keep the whole 24 inches. It's going to be a little shorter because you have to piece them together. But um, we need this to be 22 and 3 quarters. So what I'm trying to say is when these things are laid out, we're going to have this paper like this. Okay. I know it's really long and I don't even know if I can get everything in here. We're going to have a piece there. We're going to have the little bottom piece here. We're going to have the other piece here. Um, actually, this is going to be the last thing, so let's go. I just want to show you what I mean. So we have that. We have that top piece and then the flap that comes over. Okay, so when it all folds up, doo, 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 it's going to be nice. If you have a direction on your paper, this one's going to be up. It's going to be looking like this. Well, when this comes around, this one's going to be going up and over and down. Does that make sense? So what I did last time is if it has a direction, I pieced one going one way the right way and opposite the other way. I don't know if that makes sense to anybody. But <laughs> what I try to say is when you bring it back around, if this said like, ho, 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 or Merry Christmas, well then make sure this way those words are upside down when you're looking at it right now. Or whatever vice versa. And I guess if you mess it up, you can just turn it over and use it the other way. But these are both just patterns and nobody cares, so I'm just going to do that. And so what I did last time is I sewed them and it looked really cute sewing one to the other because some of this is going to be showing, you know, it just depends where we're at, that flap, the thing. This is going to be like in the back of the book, or the box. So like I said, right now these are 24 inches long of paper and I need 22 and 3 quarters when I'm done. So what I'm going to do is, I think... I'm going to place this one over this one when I glue it together. And I'm going to cut a cute edge on this. So let me just grab like a, a doily edge. It'll be cute. I'm going to do my trusty one. Actually, it would look cuter if this one... Eh, it's okay. Okay, so on this one side, I'm just going to cut a doily edge again. You start in the center. And you move over if you have any punches like this. You have a an on the edge die. You can definitely use that. So I'm just kind of revamping this project to bring it to the the century. <laughs> the other one was probably still in this century. Is just uh, not this decade. Not at all. Not even close. <laughs> And again, you can leave this. You don't even have to measure it for it to be 22 and 3 quarter inches. I'm just letting you know it has to be at least that long um, for this to work out. So hopefully you see what I'm doing. I'm going to glue this together in one long strip. Again, if I want to keep in mind the 22 and 3 quarter inches, I'm looking at my mat. Oh my gosh, you guys wouldn't even believe this. That that is 22 and 3 quarter inches the way I eyeballed it. <laughs> Perfectly. How did that happen? I don't know. But basically, I'm going to overlap this last inch or so right here. You see, like from here, if you can see my paper. So, in there. So I'm going to put glue actually on this, because that'll make it easier for me. Uh, so like about an inch square of glue. And I'm going to make sure that this will kind of stay down. I don't really want it getting disturbed. If you don't want to do this, you can just glue it flat. That's no big deal. You guys are really excited for this project. I love stuff like this. <laughs> Super excited. Um, split the difference there. And then I'll just take a peek again and make sure we're still at at least 22 and 3 quarters. Oh my gosh, we're right on it. Okay. So normally I would let this set up, but we're going to move on because we don't have a... Uh, we don't have to wait for that. We're going to start gluing pieces on this. And it's that easy, you guys. Like, that's that. And then we need to put a cover piece on it, but, you know... And I'm going to leave these facing up so you can see. Seven and a quarter by five and three quarters. We're going to put it right in the center so you have edge on the edge here and you have some over here too. You want to put plenty of glue. If you want to use ATG for this, I wouldn't think it's a problem because um, it's going to be nestled inside. It's not like it's something that's going to be worked so much. But you do want to put quite a bit of glue. So, again, I'm just eyeballing this, but you also want to make sure that the next one you place down is going to be straight and the next one and the next one, so they're not, like, veering off or something. So we have that guy. We have the 5 and 3 quarter inches by 2, and you barely need anything. So this is, once it's stuck down, it's going to come up like this. 
So what you can do is take like an extra piece and just make sure that you're the, the same width apart as at least one thickness. That's what we're going to do every time we test. Test it out. Again, quite a bit of glue. Right to the edge. You can even, like I said, give it a zhuzh. Just make sure that glue gets spread out real nice. And, you know, we cut these separately, so it's handmade, you know. What if we'll say handmade instead of homemade or something like that? Like, one's <laughs> better, I suppose, than the other. But, um, like if you say it's homemade and try to sell it, it's better to say handmade. I don't know. Okay. So there's that. So it's going to be some imperfections. So I'm keeping that to help me. <laughs> it's like um, people laying down tile, you know, with their little... Okay. So that's the bottom. And then we're going to need the next piece, which is this the back. Oh, you know, that's funny. But yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, I started with what's going to be the front when you're looking at it this way and then coming up around this way. So pay attention to that. If you care, that little flippy lace can be in the front. It doesn't matter. Or, you know, the, the other edge. Whatever happens, don't worry. It'll be nice. <laughs> So I hope you guys are following along. It's really just the sizes that I cut things. That's why I'm leaving it facing up so you guys can see. And um, in the other video, I paper pieced even another piece on this to look pretty, but I think I'm just going to leave it like this for now. But definitely reference the other video if you want to have a little bit more style ideas, I suppose. Okay, so that's the same. I think we're keeping it pretty straight here. That's one thing I didn't do last time is like train things. If you wanted to, you can definitely start training this paper right now. It's not really the paper on the outside that you have to train. It's the paper that goes in the center here that you have to train. That's the one that gets tricky. Okay, so now we're coming up around the top of the lid, or, you know, the top of the project. And then that last piece, which would be the flap that goes in front. Now, you don't even have to do that flap that goes in front. If you want to end it right here, what you can do is cover this up and put, like, ribbon That'll be your closure, like from this piece, close it to the top of this piece, the top of this piece, and put ribbon, or whatever you want to put. But, um, I should have done this for Freeform Friday. Friday got so busy, you guys. I was even going to put out a diamond press video uh, for the new tags. Actually, I'm going to use one of those today, I think. Um, but I was like, oh, there's too many videos already. And then I have some other Anna Griffin videos ready to go. I don't know when I'm going to... I guess I'll put this video out this morning, but, um, a lot of fun. Okay. Oh my gosh, that new collection from LDRS. I actually need to pop on there and order some of their, um, Christmas collection. Ooh, did I put my little, I did, didn't I? I feel like I don't remember doing that. Okay. And then the last one. I mean, you guys, I hardly even pause right now. I'm just cutting, cutting, and doing everything, and you see about how long it takes. And the reason I give myself some extra, if you add up all these numbers, you're giving yourself a little bit of extra in the length, is because you're going to take up like an eighth of an inch here and there all around, and you just want to be able to do that and not be stuck with like not enough paper at the end. So at the end, I have a little bit extra. So this is still isn't dry yet, but what I'm going to do is... <laughs> Take this corner, like I usually do, and get kind of close. We're going to miter. Not too close, because then you're going to expose that little corner, but close enough. And you can even do a little funkier if you like. I'll do the same thing on this side. And then we're going to train, as I call it. And I totally forgot to do that the last time I made a binder cover for you guys. Just get this going. Last time I just put the glue in. But that's not really the best thing to do. What you want to do is really get that on there bone fold it, burnish the very edge, and it just helps you glue that down better later. So again, I'm going to go and train this whole edge, again, up against itself here. This one's different because it's long like that. We're trying to get it close to the edge as we can, so it wants to behave. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for this other side, okay? 
So I'm just going to fold this guy up and then this whole side. I'm trying to debate. I wouldn't put like the most thickest paper on the inside, but I have that Hobby Lobby paper again. And it's pretty thick. And I think I'm going to use this brighter red to line it. And that means I'll probably also use that bright red to do the um, gusset. Just so it matches. So I think I need a few sheets of this. <laughs> Let's see. You can mix and match. And all my other projects, I mix and match the colors. Like what went inside and then the gusset things or the accordion fold thing was like a whole other color. So with these guys, again, you need it to be <laughs> however long, which is basically the whole thing. And they need to cover this area to like the almost the very edge, right? So um, I'm going to make them basically the same... Um, let's say five and a half inches wide. So this is five and three quarters. Ooh. We're only taking a quarter inch off that side. So I need the two sheets and I'm going five and a half. Okay, I'm just getting these ready because these are really thick. Honestly, I would use cheaper like recollections like the basic paper or the basic Hobby Lobby paper, you know? Because it's so thick it's gonna it's gonna wanna fight me, but it'll be okay. Let me turn this back the way it was before. And let's just pretend these that, you know, we're going to train this right now. Again, I just like to get all these things bent a little bit, <laughs> doing what they need to do. Like these pieces need to go in. And hopefully you can see now, actually, I can show you what we made. Oh, you guys. It'll be fine. Right now it's wonky because of the paper. And see on the back it has that little, like, edge. You know, you can do it however you want. Like I said, you can have cut that one over this, this one over that, sewed it. That's what I did. Lots of fun things. Okay, I'm going to use ATG right now just to hold this down, which, you know, whatever. But I'm going to put a little bit of ATG here, get that guy down, and that means I want to burnish it too. Because ATG sometimes wants to be funny. And it's so funny in that old video, I'm like... Use your ATG because you really want this to stay, but like ATG has not been my my favorite <laughs> recently. But back in the day, we were like, yes. I mean, it will hold. It's going to do what it needs to do right now. So, no big deal. But, um, all right. I'm going to go down this whole strip. A little bit there, a little bit here. And I am, ooh, look at that. I am tearing my uh, chipboard. If you want to do this with recycled cereal boxes, I would just say double it up because it's not super thick. But it, it, maybe not because there's so much paper on this project, you might, it might feel nice anyway. So see what I did? I put the stuff, I'm burnishing. I'm giving it that little bit of give. This is another reason why the ATG is kind of like, mm, because where it sticks, it sticks. It's not going to be forgiving right here, you know. So I'm kind of doing that, giving it a bend so it's ready for that. Okay, and I'll do the same thing on the other side, you guys. Oh my gosh, so I'll do the same thing on this side, and I'll be right back. Let me move this guy out. Now we got it. I just want to show you that basic thing. Look at that. And there'll be accordion folds in here, and that's where we're going to place our little um, guys. And hopefully, <laughs> yes, I was going to say, it's going to be just right there. So again, I made this 7 and a quarter inches tall. If you want to make yours... Um, cause you know, some of the paper clips, seven and a half inches tall, just do seven and a half and you're going to add some in the length. This is totally customizable, whatever you want. So, um, okay. So now we have this guy. We need to cover it cause obviously this is ugly. And so what we're going to do is just cover it. Now I usually start at one edge here and I made this so it's right on there. Like just covering everything, you know? If you, you know, in my other video, I think I left a quarter inch on either side, but this time I left like about an eighth of an inch on either side. And honestly, I probably should have left a sixteenth of an inch. It would have been better. But that's okay. Wet glue this time because, um, and I'm not even cutting these down. I'm just going to let them layer over each other because you really want this to stick. So again, right on the edges, right all over this. If you want to put the ATG like in the middle part, that's fine. I just like a wet glue because it really, it'll really hold this, you know. And again, I'm doing this by eyeballing it. <laughs> you can definitely put the glue on this. The reason I'm putting so much glue also is because when we put this down, we're going to have to train it to go where it needs to go. And I just want to make sure we're good here. Hold on. Oops, a little too far this way. And I totally missed this other area of glue right here. <laughs> totally missed it. 
totally put the glue somewhere else. Hold on. Let's make sure. There we go. Did I wipe that under my table? I think I did. Okay. Now, <laughs> this is where, while this is still wet, you want to feel where the, where our little grooves are right here. Just to get this going again while it's wet. If we do it later, it might just pop and buckle, which is what I did in my last video in the tutorial. I was like, oh, yeah, I should have done this while it was wet. <laughs> it was fine. I mean, you just have to work with it a little bit more. Especially if you use like an ATG glue, it's wet, it's dry already, right? But we just want to make sure that these guys are doing what they do without, and look at that, how nice and flat that is. Okay. And again, that it moves. It moves because it's just like a pop-up card, why it moves. So actually, I'm going to let that part set up before I move on to the next part. So I'm going to let this... Actually, no, I'm not. Well, am I? Let me think. Yeah, I can see what I'm doing if I was to go in here. Uh, I just want to see how much I should let this dry before I move on to the next part. I don't know why I'm making this so technical. Last time I just glued it all down at once and then messed with it afterwards. Um, okay, so hopefully you can see. I'm not cutting this paper and it goes to like here and again all along the edges uh, very edges and make sure we're putting lots in here on the very edge holding all that prettiness down and right to the edge basically you can work with your margins if you're afraid of leaving only a quarter inch like I did on these you can leave half an inch on either side especially because you're going to use two pieces of paper anyway you might as well make it easier for you I'm just going to place that there and all the way up. Ooh, so pretty. Yep, I just missed this one area here. Wipe away that extra glue. I put quite a bit extra down here. <laughs> Good thing that'll be in the back where no one sees it anyway. All right. Okay, so those are my bends there. There's going to be another bend right here. And again, we're just trying to get that trained up, so... So it's easier. Right there. And then this guy. Like I said, I think I'm making this look more difficult than it is, but that's okay. Ah. Oh, interesting. Remember I told you I wasn't cutting it down. Probably should have trimmed a little bit off. I'm going to trim that off in just a second. All right. I'm going to kind of leave it like this because I need this to stay down. So I'm going to let this dry completely, you guys. Well, not completely, but almost completely. <laughs> and I'll be right back. But this inner piece, um, you know, I didn't write numbers for it, but again, I did five and a half by probably uh, half an inch less than the length, so two and 22 and a quarter. So if you did 22 and a quarter inch length by five and a half, that's basically what we have here, okay? Um, I'll be right back and let that dry for a little okay, bit. Guys. So I just took this um, edge of my scissor and just went like this. So again, we could have cut that down at the beginning. I just wasn't sure what was gonna happen with all of that, you know, stuff so as far as the openings again it's the same reason pop-ups act silly on you it's because it's one paper tucking into the same spot another paper is already at but so you just got to work with it be patient and that's kind of why I worked it with it when the water the water was wet when the <laughs> glue was wet so we could make it work yay okay um I'm trying to see what else I need to do Oh, the inserts. Okay. So, what did I do with my paper? Here it is. I only left myself one paper. It's because I needed to use two last time. Okay. So, these I'm just going to cut down. Oh, I'm using lots of this paper. Five and a half. Five and a half. Okay. 
And then we're going to score. So these are basically A2 size pieces of paper, five and a half by eight and a half. But I want to score them on either side and we're going to make like a little gusset. And I'm going to recommend right now when you make yours, please use a thinner paper than I used. I use that heavy duty paper and it really wants to just stay where I put it, which is kind of a bummer. But that's okay. So we need this section to measure out to five and a half. So that means on either side we need to take away three inches, right, um, all together. So we're going to score at one and a half on this side. And one and a half on this side. And you know what I never thought about? Like maybe scallop edging these two, making them cute. I don't know. If you want to do that, you can definitely do that. But all I'm doing right now is just this and this. Okay? And I'm going to do that with um, the other three. And I'll be right back. Oh, sorry. Probably scratch that. Okay. And I didn't really score them like really hard because I like them to be kind of round and chubby. So all we're going to do with these guys is glue them together, basically. So I'm trying to think. A wet glue would hold up better longer, but I kind of like the idea of just using this ATG right now. So I'm just going to put it on the very edge. And if you're using a wet glue, again, just on the very edge. That's one thing I do like about the ATG as far as this part. Because you can see how it's traveling and you can put it right on the edge. Okay. So we got that one. And we're going to put this one right on top. And again, since we're using ATG where you place it and push it down, you're pretty much going to stay there, so be careful. <laughs> I had a little extra ATG down here. We're going to get rid of that. And hopefully you see what's going on here. That kind of makes like a pocket. And hopefully, if I calculate this right, it'll hold my little guy. <laughs> yeah, perfect. And I did halves because, or five and a half, because I thought, well, if it's five and three quarters, it's just getting wider and wider. This box is going to be so wide. But if you like a little less, you know, for it to be a little um, less snug, you can do five and three quarter. Um, but you're going to have to, again, adjust the size of the um, outside of your your package, your, um, your folio, right? It's going to have to be a little bit different. And then we're going to get to a point where we don't have any else to stick these to. And I really wanted to make this six pouches, but again, or seven or eight. <laughs> you can make these, sky's the limit. You just got to keep paper piecing if your paper is not big enough for certain things. But And again, I'm trying to lay these over each other pretty well. I'm not bone folding the edges. I'm just really making sure I'm burnishing that glue. So now we have another one. There's something in this one that you just want to make it stick. Oh, it's on the... Okay, so now we have two pockets, essentially, and then the third one. I think in the other video I did six, but basically it's like a half an inch and the bottom and the top, half an inch here for each gusset is kind of what I did. So I think in the other video I did six and I did a three inch at the top and three inch at the bottom. This I'm doing four and I did two inches at the top and bottom, right? You can just play with that. Just depends on what you want to do. Again, the other one was designed to hold four by six um, pictures. Okay, guys, and this is basically it. What we're gonna do is stick this guy in there, which is another fidgety part of it. But you should be able to put one, two, three, four things in. On this back one, since it's the same color, I don't care. But if on this last one, if you want to cut another piece of paper that's like five and a half a little shorter than that you can glue those that together right if you had one piece of paper back here but we're basically going to stick these in here so i don't care what that looks like and i like to stick it right at the bottom so right at the very base i think last time i started off with the this part but today we'll do this one and again just that last quarter inch of paper is going to have glue on it a little extra just in case And what you want to make sure is that you don't place it in a way that um, when you close it, it wants to push up. So just make sure you're, I'm touching the very base. You don't have to do that. And I'm eyeballing left to right. And before I really squish it, hopefully you see it at the very base, left to right, is make sure that this isn't in a way that's crunching it, you know, that's not letting it sit. Okay. So I'm just pushing it down with my hands, but you can also get down in there with your hand and squish down the pocket and then this is going to stretch to the front 
And that's why this one's going to be a little tight because it only has four pockets. The last one that has six pockets is almost like an accordion. You know, it just as however many more pockets you put in, it's going to be that much better. Now, on this one's interesting is what we're going to do is put tape. And we could have done this before I added it here. On the inside quarter, so if we did this, and I'm just imagining where that quarter inch was. And now we're going to put tape all over this. Or glue. All in here, because we don't want the... Ooh. Do you see? This is one of the reasons I stopped using my ATG. Actually, in that other video, it was squeaking, and I was like, oh, that darn ATG. <laughs> okay. So you can either put your hand in here, or however you want to do it, close this thing up. But you need to bring this up here and before I really squish it, I'm kind of making sure that I'm centered you know you don't want to stick it down crooked after all that work so actually what I'm doing is I'm holding it and I'm paying attention to where it's going to lay down once I place it I'm kind of left and righting it right there would be great I'm kind of looking here I'm looking here there's a little bit extra here than there is here as you can see but not too bad so that is that I'm going to stick my hand in here <laughs> I'm sticking my hand in that very pocket I just made just to squish it down. Again, we would like to burnish it, maybe get your bone folding tool in there, get some heat going, burnish that down. And there it is. I mean, that's basically it. Folio. Now let's see. I'm going to place our little folders in here. Do I have another one that's ready? This one's a little bit chubby. It's just fine. And that's kind of why I went with the half inch, because I was like, well, and it's basically just as tall as I need. <laughs> Look at that <laughs> on both of those. So uh, before we finish it up, I'll get the other ones out of their packaging. Now, we need something to close this. You want to put Velcro? Go ahead. Magnetic closure? Go ahead. And that's what I was saying. If you don't want this flap here, you could have just not done this flap and put ribbon here and ribbon here, however you want to attach it. Or actually, you can glue it all the way around, and then that's where you end up tying it. Does that make sense? Leave yourself ends on either part glue it down all around the outside that'd be really pretty and festive so what i did last time is i used a big piece of chipboard here and this would slide into it so what i'm going to do this time is use um those little tags from diane press so i'll be right back oh my gosh you guys this is silly so what i'm going to do is i took this tag off because if you saw the video i had glued this one in there uh, with the words but i don't need the words what i'm going to do is put this here because what I did last time is I just pushed this through because I figure if you stick this to a GIF, it's not going to come through with that knot. But what I'm going to do on this back side, hmm, should I just make a knot or glue it down? I'm thinking I'll just glue them down. Because we're going to have a little bit something else to do too right now. I'm going to stick those down. Cut the rest of it away, I think. Look at that. What I'm going to do is make this bulky and have it be my closure. And just like this. I think it can be like, well, I kind of want it like that for some reason. <laughs> I'm probably going to let her just fly. Otherwise, we could just glue it down. Um, what I did in my other video is, again, I told you guys we can use these scraps, is like this guy. This is double the thickness of that. So if it's double the thickness, and maybe even triple, I might add another one, is what we're going to glue this to so that this can tuck in behind it. hope that makes sense. That's why I wanted this to be kind of sturdy. So what I'm going to do with this is just cut it down to something small that will fit behind this guy. Doesn't have to be too big. So this is going to be totally customizable to you guys. Actually, I have a piece here that I can do that with even better because I can probably use this for something else, right? It's like a nice spine. Oh, what I was going to mention to you guys is what we just created could have also made you a mini album if we didn't put that gusset in. Um, you can just put like mini album spine and you have this mini album that opens like this, you know, if you want, um, like this. <laughs> so, I mean, that's basically where I got this from, just making mini albums all the time. Yeah, I think, sure. So I just need to cut this down to pieces that are about the same. So let's say we did one inch pieces. Let's see what happens. So just use your scrap, whatever scraps you have. And like I said, I might have to triple it. I don't know, we'll see. There's one inch, one inch, and if I triple, I'll just use whatever is left here. It's like three quarters of an inch. It doesn't matter. And if you want this to be even sturdier, I was going to say, I guess we could put two tags, you know, glue them together, or another piece of paper behind this that makes it a little bit more sturdy. 
because this is basically just going to be chilling there. I think that'll be good. You know what? I am going to back it up with another piece of paper. <laughs> I know whenever I mention things, I'm like, yeah, that's what I'll do. Uh, let's see. How big is this? No one's going to see it, so I'm just going to cut this by hand. Do, do, do. Back there. About here, maybe. That's probably good. And then just a little bit off. Okay, I'm going to glue that down. And just let it set up. And then we're going to add that backing piece. Again, this could be anything, but what I did last time was chipboard. And then I cut pieces of paper that... Um, coordinate with the chipboard, you know, right over at the same die because I was using a big die, and then um, that was my area that keep that kept this thing closed. So I'm using this because it's a little bit sturdy, you know, with the thickness and everything that's going on. You can definitely use just cut chipboard by hand if you wanted to. Let's say you had this, and then just cover it with some pretty paper, and that'll be what's holding it down. And then maybe you put some flowers on it or decorate it. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> I'll be right back once this is set up. Okay, that's good. I'm just trying to think, how do I want to put this on here? I'm going to stack these guys together. I probably should have done that while we were waiting. And that's going to keep our little piece on here. It should be just as high that this thing can't just... Hopefully you can see it's a little bit higher than this. So that when we put this on it... This is just tucked in behind it, and that's what helps us keep it open and closed, right? So you kind of have to eyeball where that is the most comfortable. To me, that felt there. Wherever I was right now, that felt pretty good. <laughs> so I think what I'll do is I'll glue this part down, and then I'll glue my little guy on top. I did it differently last time. I think I used ATG, too, the whole time. <laughs> so let's, again, I'm closing this up, kind of keeping it center. Pop that here. And then we'll glue that down when we're good and ready. And then we'll know how high that needs to be. Okay? So I'll be right back once this sets up a little bit more. Okay. So again, we're eyeballing that. And I was going to, you know, you can even do it like this, but my character is facing a different way. That's why. So that last time I did have a buckle that looked like this. And it holds that whole area. But I think for now I'm barely going to have her right in here. So again, let's put glue all over this. Now she needs to stay on here forever. <laughs> so we've got to put a good amount of glue. And she can't be too, too high because then you're not going to be able to get this open. So it's just there to kind of hold it. And again, this is wet glue, so I can't let it go right now. It'll just come right off. So let's just... I think that's a good thing. It looks like it's about an inch down. So I'm going to hold this here until it dries. But again, if you don't have dies or if you want it to be sturdy, you still want to use chipboard. Let's say we cut this piece down to like a little chunk. And then we also wrapped it with some pretty paper, just like we were wrapping hair or something. And have that be your buckle, right, with the two pieces of chipboard underneath. And then maybe have, you know, Christmas ephemera written on it or whatever it is you want. Put some little flowers, some die-cut flowers, some flowers from your, your ephemera, whatever it is that you want to decorate. It'd be really cute. Uh, I was even thinking about putting a ribbon on this and stuff. But, you know, however you want to decorate it, that's up to you. But uh, I'm going to let that set up, and I will be right back, guys. While I'm waiting for that to dry up, I'm just going to take my little folders, pop in there. And then this one, <laughs> she had uh, put a uh, hidden ultra paper clip that sticks up a little bit high. And I maybe I can put it on the left side of it. You know what I'm saying? It still sticks up a little bit too high. I was going to say I can put it on this side. But I don't know that, that even that will let me keep it in here. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. Mm, no. So what I'm going to do is just take it out and pop it inside. Oh, I was actually I can stick her out here. Oh, I could have used her as the closure. <laughs> Honestly, it's so sturdy. I could have put that there. So cute. Anyway, all right, let's pop that inside of here. Keep that together. And look at that. So then you go through and you're like, okay, let me see what's in this one. Open it up. Oh, you know, I want to use some of this or, you know, however. Oh, look at this. Oh, little tags. I <laughs> love it. My goodness, you guys. This was such a fun one. I mean, you guys knocked it out of the park. 
Oh, I, let me point this out. I love the um, construction of this because if they were both pointing the same way, it, you would have to find like where to open it up. But since they're one and the other, you just go like this. Wow, you guys, that's smart. That's really smart. Okay, so then open it up. Again, if you want to make this much wider, you have something else or maybe something else you want to carry with this. For every extra one of these guys, add a uh, half an inch. But look at that. It's so cute. A little bit to work with, a little persnickety at some times. I don't want to... I think this glue is still wet, so I don't want to mess that up too much. But uh, I'm going to hold it because I don't want it to pop open and pop this off. But I'll have some images for you guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you guys for joining. Um, let me know if you're going to try this out or if you have tried it out before. I know I put that video out, I think, last year, and a lot of people were like, oh, I made one. And actually, some of my friends uh, Instagram me. If you ever want to tag me on Instagram, please do if you make something because I would love to see it. But thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day, and I'll see you all at the next one. Bye now.